Ni hao. Hola, mi amigos. Yes, I've got my head with me. And also, James is with me as well. James, say hello. Hello. What, what was that then? You just put on the screen. What I just put on the screen? Hang on, let me just... So let me just move this around as well. There we go, that's better. So this is my bust of my head, which I found out, which always sits nicely in my spare room. Why have you got uh, a bust was, of your head? So when I had this, this made, it was actually for Harry Potter uh, when George lost his ear. So what they do, they use all the, um, you, know, you know when you have your teeth done? Um, they use that, that stuff, but they put it all over your head, leave you there for 15 minutes, and it brings out something like, this and on the back of that they mold the ear off there there you go but i thought i'll dig him out he's got a nice hat on today there he is and welcome back. everyone That's it, yeah. okay anyway yeah hello everybody thank you for joining us this week on the old uh, double trouble and the main thing as well that we wanted to talk to you about today is well first of all thank you so much for such an amazing response to last week's podcast with our lovely sis bonnie uh it went down surprisingly well not surprisingly at all but very very Pleasantly surprised by the numbers, very well. Yeah, and uh, again, a few thanks to Bonnie for joining us. Uh, we actually, what was actually fun about that was, I think we said before, is that we're actually asking questions which we've never asked to yes. someone we've known for going on twenty years, which is uh, rather a fun thing to do. And we had a good little chat after as well. So yeah, huge thanks to Bon for coming on. Sorry, let me just put my lovely uh, earphones in. Your sideburns, sideburns, they're back on. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, so yeah, so as I said, it's been, it was just absolutely fantastic to see the amount of love what was coming in from our uh, really cool talk with Bonnie. So just a huge, huge thank you to everybody for doing that as well. And like James said, asking Bon questions that we haven't necessarily spoken about before is always really, really cool. Very much so. Very much so. So you may be wondering, who is our guest this week? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> but he's we here. haven't got- He's already shown today. <laughs> the bus. The reason being is that, uh, can we say who it was going to be yet? No, we can't say who it is because it looks like it could still happen. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, our guest, who is a very, very, very cool person, had to get um, permission from his former boss to come on the show and to the point where I had to give in all the questions that we were going to ask so they could be checked out and everything. And unfortunately the confidentiality thing and everything like that. They were going through them and we haven't heard back yet. It looks like they're very busy. So hopefully sometime soon we will have this guest on and I'm sure you guys will absolutely, absolutely love it. So for now, we thought, because this season we haven't done the double trouble where it's just James and James and I, we would, one, go back to answering some of the questions because last week we said, have you got any questions? And it blew up. So we're going to go through a few of those for you. And then also talk about some other stuff, what we've been getting up to. And I thought we could relive some old stories from way back in the day when we would be on the promotional tours. So first of all, James, is there anything what you've been getting up to lately or seen that's made you chuckle? <laughs> anything I've been getting up to lately or made me chuckle? Well, first of all, I got rid of the tree in my garden. I was like a man possessed. I got a pickaxe, went ballistic and got it out. So I've been a doing... pickaxe? Yeah. A pickaxe to get a tree down? Yeah. You'd be there all day. You mean an axe? No, a pickaxe. A pickaxe is one of those long ones. What you use to get through ice. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's kind of pickaxe. Like a long... A long it's pickaxe. Axe. No, it's a... It's not a pickaxe have, when you go in. Have you ever heard of a chainsaw? You ever, when, I, when, I was, when I was removing the 16 in our back garden, I used a chainsaw, you see. I know, I thought I'd be... Uh, see, I've got my lumberjack look going on now. By the way, I've, basically, I've also been told I look now, because I haven't um, cut my hair or my beard, that I either look like Grizzly Adams, I look like the um, caddy from Happy Gilmore, Forrest Gump when he's running, Jesus, which again, I'm quite confident of that one, or Richard Branson, because I keep doing this. Oh, God. Yeah, so anyway, thank you for everybody who pointed that out. So anyway, yeah, I... Uh, if there's, and it, so I'm going to cut in there. If there's anyone with any more suggestions for James's appearance, um, please, please send them in, and we will try and maybe do a montage at the end of this season when it's all come about. Um, 
yeah, my hair looks a bit messy today. I'm kind of just in lockdown mode. It's starting to get to that awkward stage where it's, it's like, like I was schoolboy. It was well, I wouldn't even go schoolboy. It just looks like a a, a bob, a bob, because my hair is just thick and straight. But anyway, there we go. That looks quite. I think I like that as well. Uh, and I've also found a way to discourage the pigeons from meeting in my garden again. How's that? Because I bought one of the so you know the sonic things you put in your in your ground to get rid of rodents and everything like that. Yeah, I did that. However, someone knocked on my door and said, "Would you mind awfully just turning it off a bit? I can't stay in my back garden at the moment." So that put up to my plan. Right. Um, I've got my dog to run out there, <laughs> which <laughs> moves them on. However, the robins are not that bothered so they just chill out on the on the deck which is very cool my dog doesn't robins attack. are all right though robins are okay well yeah because they're not hooking up on my garden no exactly exactly but then the other day i did put it on instagram and i got um quite a, load, a few nice messages so i did my uh my usual sunday morning 10k came back and i was a bit tired so i was sitting out i just thought i'm just going to chill out here and then i ended up noticing how many different types of birds there are in the garden and a good friend of ours, Emma, is a uh, an expert on all things animals, but especially yes, birds. She's actually got one of the coolest jobs I think I've ever heard of. She goes around, or she's she's paid to go to different countries with groups of people and find or show the different birds whilst they're living there. And she can tell you what bird song they are, you know, where they are and everything like that. And it doesn't just work for birds either, does it? It's also different animals. So shout out to our lovely friend, Emma, who does such an amazing, amazing job. Yes, she's, uh, I tagged her on my Instagram post as well. So please uh, give her a follow if you want to see some cool, interesting animal pics every so often. Yeah, so what, so what was it then? More time in the garden then this week? Uh, that, um, and also the golf courses are open now. So I've been playing, I played twice already, social distancing, obviously, uh, mm. in for the game uh, and for me, for wing. Um, but my first drive was straight down the middle. What was the second shot? Uh, that was on the green. Putting wasn't too great, but it was just great to be outdoors again on the golf course. It was very good fun. But equally, I'm very still enjoying being able to just be at home. Yeah, it's it's definitely kind of working its way into normality. Right, so I saw a very fun article, or a good article actually, um, in the news. Uh, basically because there is, again, social distancing and making sure that people don't meet up and do things like that. So in, in Sweden, there's supposed to be a beer fueled festival going on, which um, authorities in Lund say that 30,000 people have gathered in Stads Park in recent years to celebrate the spring festival Valborg, right? So you may be asking, how do you stop 30,000 people gathering to drink beer and celebrate? Well, according to these local authorities, what has happened is they have sprayed the whole area with chicken manure. So no one wants to stand around there literally in chicken mess. So there's one good thing and one innovative way of doing it as well. So if you do smell that, know that, you, and you are in Sweden, know that you're there for a festival and you shouldn't be there. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just glad they're not doing that on the streets around here. Bringing that up. Well, actually, that brings me on to a, a fact of the day. So did you know, so a lot of the trees that you, that you see all over the world, yeah, especially in, in a, in the northern hemispheres and such. Uh, did you know that squirrels plant thousands of these things every year because they take their acorns or their nuts or whatever, bury them, go away, and they forget where they are? What, so, so, what, all of them? Not all of them, they haven't got like a contract with the country, but they're- I was gonna say, maybe, maybe we should have linked them in with Bon last week. Um, when she was talking about deforestation and everything like that, maybe just, just get send a load of squirrels. Yeah, but you need to make sure they're the right kind of squirrels because you don't need the grey squirrels what came from North America to the UK many years ago and got rid of the red squirrels. No. You know? Well, you could. And, That's and, and what type That's of squirrel fun. does it? Does a, does a grey squirrel do a certain type of tree and a red squirrel do another one? Or how does that work? I don't think they're colour-coded. Again, this is going to be a, a, just a fact that you're ruining now. 
Well, I, I'm just I'm just looking more into the facts. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So while you've also been out and about, have you been reading any new books or listening to any uh, new stories on like audio books or anything like that lately? Uh, I just finished the audio book of one of my favourite comedians uh, from Scotland, a guy called Kevin Bridges, who is Brilliant. rather funny. Few tasty words, but very, very funny. So uh, I definitely recommend giving him a little listen. Uh, is, that his, is that his audio book? Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's absolutely I, brilliant. I saw him in, in concert uh, well, 18 months ago, and I literally could not breathe through laughing so much. So I think it also helps that he's around 34, 35, so he's similar age to us, so very relatable as well. No, no, fantastic. How about no, yourself? Really... Have you been listening to any opera? I, I have, no, 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 no opera this week. Um, no, I've been actually listening to, so I've been, yesterday I spent seven and a half hours uh, with a wire brush trying to scrape a load of ivy off my house, which has been done and I never want to ever do it again. <laughs> so the most exciting day possible, but it was made really bearable because I was listening to a audio book um, by a chap called Ben McIntyre, who's a historian who's written quite a few different books, mainly about like, espionage and things like that. Um, he wrote a really good one about um, Kim Philby um, a couple of years ago, which uh, I mentioned in last week's show. Uh, but he's just released one, well, he hasn't released it at all, it's been out about two years now, uh, called The Spy and the Traitor, which is about Oleg Gorye, Gordievsky, uh, who is actually a high... KGB ranking officer who was recruited by MI6 and was actually, uh, well, he was a double agent and he was the highest senior in the Cold War. So this is set in the true story. It all came to pass in about the 19, late 1980s, uh, where he was actually uncovered by the KGB. And uh, because there was an American chap, I forget his name now, horrible man, who basically realized that I want a new car, so I'm going to sell out a load of spies for $50,000. And it's yeah, very, very interesting listen. So it's been very good fun listening to that. As you can tell, I like my, my true crime listenings. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, Sorry, I, I fell asleep for a second there. And, uh, no, 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 honestly, well, honestly, if you've got again. time, if you've got time, because stuff like that with history especially is really, really interesting. And it just shows how people's mindset works, how people in one way look at it for monetary gain or they look at it as a um a way of actually doing better because of they see a better ideology and stuff like that really interesting to go through and to listen to but also as well should i tell you what's been really nice to hear james from people go on that while other people have been doing gardening work or going for a run or driving to work or coming home from a shift as I got a lovely message from one nurse who's just come back on a 12 hour shift and they were listening to our podcast on the way home and they said it just brightened their mood and they listened to it again on or half, the other half on the way to work the next day and it just put them in a great great mood for the whole day um was our podcast from last week so it was really really nice to hear all the lovely messages but that got me thinking on the beginning of last week's show we said are there any questions for people and we kind of ran out of time to go through them. So I thought we could go through a few more of those questions, what people sent to us last week. Okay, first one. Oliver, do you like you do pineapple it, you do on a pizza? Do it. No, 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 no. I'm not having this. I hate this question always coming up from different people, not to me, but just in general life. Okay, I remember once um, when we were filming, so the guy who used to do all my hair on the last couple of films, he used to, um, you know, make it look good for the films. Not the, not, the, not the dying side of it, but the styling side of it and everything like that. Luca, uh, he's an Italian, or is an Italian, fantastic chap. Actually, if you've watched all the Thor movies, he does the Thor hairstyle, he's a very good chap. Anyway, um, I remember once going into the canteen once and they had pineapple on a pizza and he went absolutely, he was just like, what are you doing? Why would you put fruit on a pineapple? And ever since, oh sorry, fruit on a pizza. On a pineapple. And ever since, well, you know what I mean. And ever since he said that, I thought, yeah, why would you put fruit on a pizza? So, no, I don't think pineapples have got any place on pizzas ever. Oh, I'll tell you no. what I... No, I'm not... No, 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 no. There's no yeah. way of winning this argument at all. No, I, I, I'm, again, sorry, everybody. The dog was barking because the postman came. Anyway, um, I have to disagree with you there because, sorry to anybody listening, especially from Italy, but I actually had 
a Hawaiian pizza with tangerines on it, which sounds horrible. Oh, but if you have disgusting. it, disgusting. No, 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 real... no, 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 not on a pizza though. Flatbread, maybe you get away with it. But no, don't give me a pizza idea. Pizza is supposed to be authentic. You wouldn't, it's a bit like someone saying to you, I'll tell you what, let's have fish and chips. Oh, okay, amazing. Yeah, let's do that. What are we going to have on it? But you're not going to have mushy peas on the side or salt and vinegar on it. Someone says, oh yeah, you know what I did? I got a load of orange and squeezed all the pips all over it. Well, fine, but then it's not a fish and chip, is it? Is it fish and chips are exactly. just- Exactly, it's not a pizza chip. then, is, is that, it? You, it's not a pizza to... then, is it, if you're doing well, that? It's a, it's a type of pizza, isn't it? Well, someone could say it's a type of fish and chips. Well, there you go. I'm not going to argue with them. Then they can have what they want. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Anyway, see what you've started there, Alice. Also, if you if you can hear a squeaking noise, I'm on this really old chair. I need to get the other one back upstairs to do that uh, today. So uh, another one is: out of all the places you've been to, which has been your favourite so far? And that's from Piece of Cake, uh, and she also says, "Greetings from Valencia." So. Valencia would be one of my favorite places uh, I have visited, but there's also many other places as well, like Sao Paulo, like Chicago, like New York, like Sydney, like Melbourne, like Osaka. Um, where else, James? Uh, I really like hiking. So Yosemite National Park is very special. Um, Teuton, the Grand Teutons. That's very good. Again, these are in North America. Uh, but if you are ever in New Zealand, there is thousands of cool hiking spots to do. So what I like, I mean, I love the cities and seeing all that kind of stuff, but I equally like just to have my tent, normally my dog with me, and we just disappear for a couple of days. So especially in the UK as well. So you've got loads of like the Peak District, Snowdonia, um, Dartmouth, National Park, you know, all around there, fantastic stuff. You have a grin. What? Oh God! I found my drum from Japan. See, so I'm going to bang this off when we've got when we've got to the end of the question, so we know we're moving on to the next one. Can we tell a little story about that drum? How getting it home costs more than the drum? Um. <laughs> no, I'll never forget. So this that was what 2005, 2007. A while ago. No, no, we 2007. Yes. And we decided to get something or or some kind of musical instrument whilst we were there, I ended up getting a, a very nice Gibson Les Paul. Uh, so I'm traveling back with that. Oliver decided to get a drum. Let me show the people who are watching on YouTube it. So it's a lovely, uh, authentically made Japanese drum with, uh, and the chat was showing me different styles, but I remember just being in a haggling mood. So I said, and it turns out people don't haggle in Japan. So I said to him, come on, you can do me a better deal on the price. No, no, no. I said, well, can I get, can I get a, a, a CD of how to use, of how people playing it? And he did, but he didn't get my sarcasm when I said to the chap, is that the greatest hits as well? He didn't understand that. He said, oh yes, you hit it very great. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I brought it back. And the did lovely people- Did say that or is that just a really crap joke? No, honestly, honestly, he honestly said that. He did, I think he was lost in translation somewhere and I was trying not to cry with laughter at his faux pas. But never mind. Um, but yeah, and then I, yeah, the lovely people at Air France didn't want me to put it on the uh, on the airplane. They wanted to put it in the hold, and I said, no, 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 no. This this could break. This is fragile. And they were saying, no, no, it's fine. It will be fine. And I was still saying, no, no, no. Um, I'm taking it on the airplane with me. And that's how I remember the story, James. Okay, let's remember it like that, shall we? So I'm remember. editing this week, so I can tell the real story. Go on, how do you edit? How do you remember it then? I remember you getting to check it, asking how much it is to check it in, and it ended up being more than the, you paid for the drum. A little bit, yes. Next question from Abby, who's uh, as Azazi Police, says, what's the best sports game you've ever been to? Uh, my, the great best sports game I have ever been to would be the 2005 Ashes second test, fourth day, at Edgebaston, England won by two runs. Um, it's known as the greatest test. So in cricket, um, it can go, there's, there's certain formats of the game and there's one which is called a test match, which can go on for five days and it can even end up in a draw. Uh, so many, many years ago, I went with my nan and they actually had it on TV the other day. They had a, a highlight 
uh, of the, the whole final day. And I actually found myself in the crowd. I paused it at an exact moment and you can see myself in the background. It was when we were filming the fourth movie. So my hair was quite down to here as well. Um, definitely the most memorable, memorable thing I've ever done. Was it off? Was it four days? It was over in four days, yeah, because England looked like they were going to win it. And I remember the night before, my nan calling me and saying, oh, we won't go, lol, They'll, it'll be over really quickly. And then Australia came right back into it and nearly won it themselves. So it was brilliant. That would be one of my sporting highlights I've ever been to, especially being a big sporting fan. But, you know, fortunately, we've been able to do loads of cool stuff when we've been away in terms of going to different sporting events. And so I always find that if you go to a sporting event, you're actually seeing the real culture, the real people um, of a country. So that's what I, well, we always try and do, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one says, do you try to watch Harry Potter movies in French or another language? How's your Spanish coming, by the way, James? Um, no, it's still, it's still coming. Uh, oh, but I can't get basically when so I've got this app on my phone where you um, it shows you pictures and you remember the pictures and then it tells you to read the dialogue and you to pronounce it correctly right um, and all my apparently my wife keeps saying to me all I keep saying is L, L, and then I keep stuttering so I need to get past that but I did you sound are you sounding like that Maradona interview? Yeah. La, la, so yeah. for anyone wondering what we're talking about, so the great Diego Maradona uh, did an interview once when he was pitch side when he was in Mexico as a manager. And the question was very simple. It was like, so how do you, how do you rate the competition level here in Mexico? And it is literally half a minute of him just la, la, So la. at the moment, that is how my Spanish is going. No bueno. Uh, no bueno. It may be, maybe I should have got locked down in Spain. If there's another lockdown coming, I'll try and get to Spain or, or Latin America. And then Why? You'll... You won't be able to speak the language, though, because you won't be able to go out and learn it anyway. Yes, but you'll, all the TV will be, won't it? And then there's no getting around it then. Moving on. Drum. Oh, excellent question. How do you feel about sporks? Oh Christ, sporks! Waste Excellent of time. Question. Oh, Waste why of is time, this? sporks? Why? why? Okay, you've either got a fork or you've got a spoon, or you could even use both at the same time. But why a spork though? Because you, it's not sporks aren't long enough to actually eat pasta with or anything like that. So why sure do you can just scoop it? If it's big enough to stab it, is it big enough to scoop it? Surely. Uh, I'm a big and, fan. And I'm being a purist because I always remember what our grand, uh, nan and granddad always used to say. Forks aren't shovels. So you don't scoop them like that. No, but this is a spork. So it defeats that whole yeah, you're just it adding a, You're just adding a bit of cutlery what's not there. Yeah, well, that, then that defines that rule of what's scooping so, with what, your fork. What is, what is so hard at just using a knife to spoon it back onto the upside of a, of, a, of a fork. Do you know, after quarantine's over, I'm going to come around to yours. I'm going to make you fish and chips drizzled in orange and make you eat it with a spork. Yeah, and then turn up with a pizza with a load of fruit on it. Ooh, look, Oliver, look, I've got this amazing pizza with strawberries on it this time. Well, I'll tell you what. See, it's just weird. You don't do stuff like that. Well, it's strawberries in Nutella pizza. Oh, okay, yeah. I really enjoy my cheat days. So don't these are, okay, all right. Move okay, on. next question, next question, next question. Are you doing yoga too while quarantining in home? I assume that Fred is asking me that question. Yes, as, it, as a matter of fact, I have been doing a bit of yoga. Um, granted, I'm not doing it as much as I should be, probably only three times a week, as opposed to what, four or five, what's recommended, but it's getting better. I can nearly, nearly touch my toes, nearly, but not quite yet. So yes, I have been doing that. I'd say I'm as graceful as a ballerina elephant, but still all the best, trying my best with it. Another drum, another drum for the question. Thank you for asking yourself a question there. That was very... Well, that's okay. I mean, I started doing one. I know we need to do it. So have you done any baking during quarantine? 
Yes, I have. Um, yeah, quite a bit. Although this week, it's been scaled back a little bit because I was getting told off for just getting flour all over the kitchen. But um, we made, uh, or I made some baguettes, which was actually really tricky to make, um, just in terms of the proven method for it. But I managed to do that quite happily. And then I was also making some lovely scones um, to have with afternoon tea which we had because obviously like any proud Englishman, tea time is a serious thing. And uh, yeah, so after working in the garden, I said to my wife, should we have tea time today? She's like, yeah, a bit of tea. So I made some lovely fresh scones with cream and jam. And yeah, really easy to do actually as well. A bit time consuming, but definitely worthwhile doing. Very good. Uh, so every week, I, we always have a Mexican night. Mexican food, which I am a huge, huge fan of, because especially in England, there are very few restaurants which serve genuinely good Mexican food. So for the last what, three or four years, normally once a week uh, in the James Phelps family household, uh, my wife and I have Mexican food. So this week I decided, you know, I'm going to try and make my own tortillas. And let's just say it failed miserably. Why? Well, I didn't leave them to prove long enough and I didn't have one of those proper pan, like the, the stomper things. So they ended up looking a lot like poppadoms, but they were probably, this pencil is probably floppier than the tortillas. So a bit of a failure. But you know what they say? You learn more from your failures than you do your successes. Okay, so how are you going to rectify that next time you try? What have you learned from this? When well, you go to Mexico, when you don't speak Spanish, and you need to ask someone, excuse me, my tortillas don't work, how do they work better? Um, or you just say... They look at you and say, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> well, they'd look at you and say, I don't understand <laughs> you, mate, because you're not speaking Spanish to me. I don't understand. Well, see, so I'm going to go to Mexico... Make well, my no, you said, you said, you said, okay, okay. No, They're going to so say, what's this random English person doing here? Why are you in my you house? Know, they may say, they may say, why is Yesus talking to me in his flannel shirt? Exactly. Oh, maybe. Maybe that would. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, so I'm, I plan for next week to improve. So okay, you fantastic. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's do one, one last question. Hang on, drum goes in. My most useless, oh, that's a good one. My most useless talent I have. A random talent I can do is move my bottom lip without any part of my face. There we go. Done. Okay, I can do that as well, though. So I take it away from your talent. Not really. It didn't, I didn't say it was a unique talent. I tell you what, the most random talent I can do, I can use a lasso and wrangle things. I suppose it's a bit useless over here. Well, yeah, but I did that. So when I was on a trip to Texas last year, uh, something I wanted to learn to do, and I did. And the mm. Cowboys were very, very impressed with me, actually. So uh, hopefully is I that, get... Is, is that where you got your shirt from? No, I did not. I did not, but I've got my, my hat and everything over there. So maybe I will break that up one day. Anyway, that was all the questions. Thank you very much. Here goes the drum. Bye, drum. Let me put it back on its stand. Do you, to, do you want to lead on to the next part, James, while I take care of this bit? Where are we going for the next one? I don't know. Why don't we? Now we've been talking about um, place we've been to and things like that. Oh, a few of those questions came up, made me thinking. So obviously when we've been away on promotional trips, because we did, certainly when we were in the promotional stages of Potter in the last few films, we probably did more promotional stops in Europe anyway, or more in unique markets than anyone in the cast. And I was going through a few schedules of where we went on a couple of years. And some of them were just all over the shop. Basically, you throw an arrow at a map of Europe. We went to it at some point. Um, and I was trying to think of some fun stories about where we were and different things we saw. Because obviously, when you go to those events, you have um, at the premiere, as it were. So we did like the red carpet where we'd meet hundreds or thousands of people and then do a little speech when we got on top of the, uh, if, if there was a platform set out or in the cinema itself. Um, so that, that was always really good. But the thing what I think people don't understand is what you do in the downtime, because obviously when you're, when you're doing it, you do press junkage, which 
I'm going to be honest, it can be as boring as anything, getting the, literally the same three questions all day. And we're doing these things for like, say, four or five hours at a time. But then on the back of that, we get spoiled rotten in terms of getting to go to the best restaurants, getting seen the most unique places going. There's one really cool story I've got in Actually, Paris. It's a good but, story. No, no, no. We're going to say that. Gonna say, I was going to say, we'll say that one for next week. We have a guest who can talk about that one with us. Yes, we will reveal who that guest is at the end of the show. Um, and we have, yeah, so just li- just like little, little stuff. So there was one I remember is when we went to Helsinki, for example. So we did the the opening there where we were talking in front of the square where we were, they, they told us, the guys said, don't expect that many people coming because, you know, it's quite a, a laid back town. But literally thousands of people turned up. So that was really cool to, uh, to see that side of it. But afterwards, we went to this beautiful lake outside of Helsinki and did some very, I suppose, would they be, you're more in tune with the Finnish nation than I am. Would they be more traditional methods? Well, we went with Pekka. With Pekka, uh, who was a woodman who lived, as it was, in the wood. And he, I remember he caught this huge salmon and he'd made it, and he was like cooking it on a smoke grill all naturally, which is just absolutely brilliant. But there was a huge lake and we went out on a, on a canoe and uh, we all went out. And I remember going around, this, this, this lake is huge. It's not a little thing, it's huge. And going around a corner and from nowhere, this man who must have been, what, in his 40s, ran off the end of a jetty, which is nowhere near where we had come from. So he wouldn't have seen us beforehand. Naked, while holding onto a broomstick and then jumped straight into the lake as if like he was riding this broomstick. It is the most surreal thing I've ever seen to the point where I think I nearly tipped the canoe from laughing so much at it. Um, so little things like that, things that you don't expect. So whenever someone says to me, have you been to Finland? Have you been to Helsinki? I always think, uh, yes, I have done an amazing country. That's where the naked man jumped on a broomstick into the lake. Yeah. But let me just reiterate. So I'll give you a little bit of a factual thing then, Oliver. So Finland is the land of lakes. There are thousands of lakes all over the country. A lot of people who live in the cities also have a cottage or a little log cabin somewhere on a lake. So that's where they go to on the weekends or in the summertime. And is that sorry? So it's interesting. Is that um, is that commonplace throughout Scandinavia? Uh, potentially, I, mean, I can only okay. verify in Finland. Uh, okay. Sami, as it's called. Um, and what? Sami. Sami. What's that? That's the Finnish for Finland. Really? So Finland in Finnish isn't Finland. Right. Fact, so I suppose that's the same. But the thing things are, lots of countries change, have different names, don't they? Yeah. It's a anyway, bit you're like, getting it's off my like... point. Shut up. Okay, sorry, getting sorry. Off my point. So, okay. and also nudism in Finland isn't that big a deal no, when you're in nature. No. So it's not like going down High Park and some random dude doing that there, that would be a bit creepy. Yes, he probably, well, he would be arrested for it. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. so that was a hey, fun, there we go. fun time in Finland. There was a, um, when we were in Madrid once, do you remember there was, went to a restaurant where they gave you a lettuce when you left? It was good lettuce though. Yeah, but it was so random. Like, here's your, thank you for coming to our restaurant. Here's a lettuce. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the fr- the frontage of the restaurant almost looked like, um, yeah, it was just it was just so so. It looked it like, like you were herbology or something like that. It was everywhere at the front. Very good yeah. lettuce, though. It was a very strange thing, but again, different cultures, single that kind of stuff, all good fun. Yeah, and then in terms of like when you're speaking to different media as well, obviously learning and obviously trying to speak slowly or in a slight accent so they can understand it easier. Did you find yourself ever doing that? Occasionally, but uh, it changed. No, I, Actually, mean, I, just, I, d- I just remembered the one of the most painful things about when we're on tour, when you try and fit in with culture and all that kind of thing. When we had the one of the final premieres in Hong Kong, and they decided at the end of the day to pass around a plate of chilies, and they said. Just try, you know, just try, it's what we do. Everyone else refusing, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll give it, I had this thing which is about half an inch, started eating, and it was literally like fire 
and lava and every other hot thing, including the sun, was in my mouth. It was burning like hell. So I drank everything on the table. That didn't work. I asked for milk, because I thought milk will put it out, and they bring hot milk. So I was, and then I was worried that I, well, I couldn't actually do any of the press that afternoon properly because my mouth was so sore. Although, yeah, what was fun is that we got to take guests with us all over. So on that particular trip, I brought one of my best mates, Anthony, who was actually Ron's double. He's now a qualified stunt double as well. So he used to say at the time he was a stunt double for his chat line. Anyway, bye bye. bye. Yeah. And barely rarely eats anything that isn't beige. But on that trip, I convinced him too to have this chili. So the two of us were literally dying at the table. And I think, but what made it worse is that everyone was laughing at us. And it was, <laughs> I really, I really was in pain. <laughs> Well, it wasn't just that, but it's like when we're hand in hand? it's like when we're in Shanghai and I got tasered. Yeah, but that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So, for those of you who are wondering what we're going on about, it wasn't due to like a police bust or anything like that. Um, while we were in while we we're in Shanghai, we went to look around the different markets and the different um, shopping experiences, shall we call them out there? Uh, some of which are really genuine and high end, and others are just dodgy, like really shady. So we were walking around this indoor market, and there was a place where you could buy speaker systems. Um, so we bought this Bose, apparently, um, Bluetooth uh, speaker, which when you turn it on, it literally, I honestly swear to God, it says, ready on mod, uh, and all it did was just <laughs> Like just complete static you go to go through a different setting so bluetooth mode uh, beep, 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 try and do that or auxiliary mode uh, and it wouldn't work anyway so while we're trying to negotiate a deal to buy this really weird looking thing james picks up no 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 mag light. we then no we then walked into a security shop and so well, you, you could, and, if you if you want to buy if you want to buy a uh, you and the other guy jesse were there and you were checking out the nunchucks and all this kind of stuff and the dude who and, a, and a laser pen that would actually light a match because yeah. everyone needs that in their life apparently. Why would you anyway? So they're talking to this dude about that. I was just looking around and I see this mag light, like this big um, torch essentially, which is like a security weapon as well. So that's quite cool. Went to turn it on, and it wouldn't turn on. At the bottom there was another switch, so I flicked that switch, pressed on again. This mag light was actually a hidden ten thousand volt taser. So I'm now on the floor, com my muscles are completely spasming. I can't let go of the torch, which is giving me the tasing experience <laughs> because my hand is switching so much like that. Everyone else, again, is just looking at me laughing while probably smoke is coming out of my ears. Eventually I get rid of the torch. The guy asks, do I want to buy it? No, I do not want to buy this, thank you. And I had heart palpitations for about three weeks. So, if you ever pick up a torch in a market, be careful. Well, yes, exactly. the funny thing was about that as well, that literally about two weeks later or something like that, there was a, a chap who got actually sent to prison for bringing such a thing into the country. Obviously, he probably, he, he claimed that it was just a, a misunderstanding that he thought, oh, I bought it, it should be okay. But anyway, turns out you can't have those things in your possession over here. Rightly so. Yes, but anyway, I, I just remember looking over and seeing you rolling around on the floor thinking, this is fantastically brilliant. Yes, thank you very much for that. Yes, your concern was there. But then there's also other sides of it as well to, to these trips that we go on where obviously after the premiere, you go for a meal and then there's seemingly a party going on there or we have a night out, um, which a lot of those were really, really good fun actually because sometimes we would go to the nicest, trendiest clubs, which we're not necessarily the trendiest people going um so we would again Definitely right now you're not what are we on about i've got my my olympic club uh, golf golf shirt on my uh floppy oh, hair yeah. chic anyway we um we went to as i said we went to these these nightclubs and we were it was quite funny that we were the only people in some of them who weren't posing so we would just start having fun or whatever and then gradually the nights would get longer and then every now and then there would be an all-nighter because we'd have to make a flight the next day. I, I actually remember one time in Madrid taking our luggage, so our suitcases, to the nightclub, checking them into the coat hanger room, and then, go, and then going straight from there to the airport to fly home. Um, 
And I always remember, we always said, no, we're not doing that again, not doing that again. You end up doing it again. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who have done maybe not quite that type of thing, but have done an all night and said never again, but they normally end up doing it. So it's always fun to do because for some reason as well, when you're on that type of environment, you're away from home, things seem more acceptable. But I think the best um, experiences of any kind of tour that we do, any kind of publicity thing that we've done is, and I'm not saying it to be cheesy, but it is actually the meeting the fans and the fans interaction because we have such a great time chatting to everybody, learning where everybody's come from. Some people are there for hours, if not days before, just to say hello. So a lot of the times I've actually got a lot of photos of meeting every, meeting a lot of people during these times and they're, uh, I still look at the most so often with great, great thanks and, and good time in memory. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Cause it, is, it is one of those moments where you just see people and you think this means so much to those guys as well, um, which is which is also really special because we've seen everything at these events from proposals to people crying, people just you know hearing stories where well, I remember this one girl who was really heavily pregnant has said, we went on our first ever date to see the, the first movie. And now we're married and we're about to have a, a kid, you know. It was, um, hearing those type of stories makes it really special. And you think back to it, even now, just makes me smile. Um, but then also as well, from meeting people, obviously meeting fans and things. Now, I always remember when we were in um, Edmonton and we went to the, uh, the Tele-Science Centre. And can you remember the free <laughs> rule? Yes. So Mike, for those of you... Mike's free rule mike's free rule uh, free rule is basically that you could put on anything if you put down it was one cent or one penny or something like that people say oh what a bargain i'll take that but you make it free there's some type of negotiation to be had with it um and i this always stuck with me the, the shit rule and i've noticed it ever since but i remember at one of the premieres we went to and what we always did because james and i would always get two tickets for us to sit down and watch the film now we've already seen the film probably three or four times at this point so at the premieres and we're doing them virtually every day uh for about three weeks we thought no we're not going to sit through everyone so what we would do we would ask the the warner brother reps who has been outside the theater the longest and while we're doing the red carpet at the end of it, we'd meet these people and we'd present them with the two tickets to the film and say, look, go and see the film. Uh, it's not, you know, the film hasn't come out for probably another two, three weeks in that country, but you're going to go see it right now. And nearly, I'd say to a point, they were absolutely ecstatic to go in. Thank you. Amazing, brilliant reception. But this one time we did it and I remember, and the first thing that came to my head when I heard the response was, <laughs> rule. and it was basically, ah, oh, thanks. So are we going to go for dinner afterwards as well at the party? Cause, uh, I said, oh, no, 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 you're just going to see the film. What, so we're not going to see you again? And I just remember thinking at the time, hang on, if I'd have said to you, give me one pound and you can go and see the movie now, they would have bitten my hand off. So that just goes to show that there's always, always the free <laughs> rule. So hopefully people will remember that when they see different things around the world and think, huh, there it is. So what was cool about when we traveled doing all the promo stuff wasn't just that we got to travel with each other. We got to travel with friends and all that kind of stuff and see these amazing things. But we also had some great people working with us as well. So from Warner Brothers and the Harry Potter whole market team, there was Jason, Eloise, Amy and Nikki, especially. And we had such a great time with all those guys. But Amy actually ended up marrying a guy called Steve. And Steve, Steve Coleman, is an amazing PT. You may have seen some of his stuff online. He actually does a workout every Wednesday um, with another guy, Ben Shepard, and they do it on their Instagram Live. But it's ever such a good workout. All body weight, so you don't need anything. But I thoroughly recommend checking it out. He's also been giving me one-on-one -on -one tuition on, over the computers as well. Mainly, I've been, so like some of you may know, I actually really buggered up my rotator cuff last year. So you've been helping work on stability for that. And also just an all round workout. So Steve has actually very kindly put a little video together for us to show you the different workouts that we've been doing. So please, please feel free to have a go. Let us know how you get on. Send him your uh, sweaty pictures. He's a bit of a creep like that. 
I'm only joking. Uh, it's, one of, it's one of his things where he, with, um, he with, wants to see how with clothes on. With clothes on, yeah. With clothes on. He wants to see how everyone's got on. Um, but yeah, really top guy. So I thoroughly recommend just giving it a try, especially in this lockdown period. It's very easy to kind of forget about fitness so much. But this is literally 20 minutes. It's all you need to do. And then you can go and earn whatever you want to eat and drink. Hey guys, greetings from the editing suite, James here. Uh, I've just realised that the video Steve sent me with the exercise that we did, I didn't actually ask him to tell us what exercises they are. So I've done my best to explain what they are for everybody else, listening on audio and on watching on the YouTube channel. So uh, please bear with me if it doesn't sound completely right. Uh, I've tried my best, however, just to let you know, we did these exercises with 7.5 dumbbells and we did five sets of 10 on all of the exercises. So if you can do five sets, that's fantastic. Otherwise, aim for two, aim for three, and then eventually four and five will follow. Have fun, thanks a lot. So for this circuit of three sets of 10, we started with press-ups on the dumbbells, and we did 10 of those. Next, we did rows in a press-up position, so keep your feet nice and straight with your core nice and tight, and pull those into your sides. And from there, still with your hands on the dumbbells, we're gonna go for a burpee and shoulder press. So hop forward, put those dumbbells to the sky and back down. Hop back, hop back up, and dumbbells to the sky. Oh, it's my favorite one. So you're gonna squat into Arnold's. So keep your hand, your palms facing towards you with the dumbbells, and we're going to squat. So your bum goes all the way to the floor, then come back up, twist. So your palms facing outwards, push up and reverse. And to finish some curls with hammers. So. Get, take a hammer grip on your dumbbells so your dumbbells are down by your side. Curl up halfway, twist so your palms are facing upwards, curl halfway back and reverse. And there you go. So there you go. Hope you get on really well with those guys. Again, if you're listening to this, just go back and check it out. It is on YouTube so you can check out what he's actually doing. And again, he's at Steve Coleman Fitness, I believe, on Instagram. So go check him out. Thoroughly recommend it. My final fact of the day. Ninus Olov, he is a penguin. He's also known as Sir Nils Olov. He's a Norwegian penguin who resides in Scotland. Anyway, a couple of years ago, he became a brigadier. Have you seen the picture of him inspecting the troops of the King's Guard? Yes. When he was made, when he's colonel in chief following his knighthood, um, wearing his military insignia attached to his right flipper. Rightly so. Well, he should do, shouldn't he? Yeah, but could you imagine, right? Could you imagine if you'd been training in the Norwegian army for God knows how long, you're standing to attention, and a penguin with more dignity than you walks past you, inspecting you? Yes, but he is the um, mascot of the squadron, so rightly so. I suppose that's better than... I think that's quite a cool thing to be done. Anyway, I mean, that'd be, I mean you'd, you'd remember know. it, wouldn't you? Did you know that there is a penguin who has been knighted and has also got many, many military honours? There you Fantastic. go. Well, I, know, I love hearing stories like that. Thank could you I just much. say as well, could I just say as well, um, before we go, just a big shout out to all the nurses out there as well, because earlier this week was World Nurse Day. Uh, so a big shout out to all those guys out there serving. I've got quite a few nice messages back from different nurses and different nurse organizations um, trying to spread more awareness. And so if you are thinking about going into nursing or learning more about the practice, uh, just check it out. Google or search wherever it is uh, where you are and just have a good look because it was really inspiring seeing all these different things, be it over here in the NHS or being in the States, be it, be it anywhere. Um, it just shows that their, their care and nature is just global, not just in one set area. So a big shout out to those guys as well. And also, James, a big shout out to um, some charities that are close to me as well. I just wanted to get that out there to the Help Harry, Help Others Smile campaign. I'll be putting one of those out tomorrow. So I will be actually nominating some people to share a smile uh, for that as well. So check out for that. And also a big shout out to all the, uh, the lovely guys who are working for well child at the moment uh, with the well child nurses as well. Yes, very well said, very well said. Okay guys, thank you very much for joining us this week. Next week. Oh yes. Okay, so we've been trying to get this together for a couple of days now. We've, we think well, we've more figured than out. That. We, we think we figured out a good date and time and everything to record. So hopefully next week we'll be joined 
by Mr. Tom Felton. Hooray! Maybe he can bring his guitar and I'll bring the drum. Oh, God. All right, I'll watch. Anyway, or you could sing. Yeah. You all know Tom, um, Draco in the Potter films. Really, really nice guy. Really, really good pal of ours. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully we can get it all sorted for next week when that will come out. Uh, feel free to spam him to uh, make sure he, he remembers uh, and send us some questions that you'd like us to ask Tom. In the meantime, all the best. Keep safe. Keep this lockdown period that is in England anyway, it's starting to ease, but let's not forget why we're all still going on about being spatial awareness and all that kind of stuff. Hope everyone is keeping well. Yes, and I just want to add to that as well, that just make sure that, as I say, everyone stays safe. If you are, if this is your first time listening to uh, our Double Trouble podcast, there are different ones available uh, from this season on the different, wherever you get your podcast, but also as well, a couple from the first season, they're still on our YouTube channel as well, because I've had a few people messaging me asking about that. If you're wondering when the next one's going to come out, we're trying to keep it weekly. So just click subscribe wherever you are and you'll never miss it as well. So just so in case some people who have been asking me, When's it coming out? We try and keep it every week. So as I say, if you click subscribe, you will always see where it is. There you go. Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye. See you next week.